In today's show, we're looking back at an action-packed Wednesday in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is also brought to you by Locker Room. Download the app and join me this week on Friday uh, to get in on the action. Locker Room is changing the way that we talk sports. Let's talk sports, let's talk basketball, let's talk fantasy basketball in particular and get into the first game, and that first game is the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Indiana Pacers. The Wolves had no Malik Beasley and Jalen Noel, of course. Josh Okogie was also out for personal reasons, while the Wolves, not the Wolves, the Pacers were without Turner, Brogdon, and Sabonis. That is three starters, and the fourth starter, of course, Tony Warren Jr. He's not going to be back this year, but the Pacers still get the win, 141-137. Townsy. Carl Anthony Towns, 35 minutes, 32 and 12, six assists, two threes and one block. A true shooting of 78%. Unbelievable stuff. This is what we hoped Chris Finch would do, is unlock Towns, boost his usage, get the ball in his hands. He is rolling. He's the fourth ranked player over the last two weeks. He's averaging 54 fantasy points. And then so much here went the injury. The Wolves are shit, Josh. They're going to shut Towns down. And my thing there always was, he can re-hurt this wrist. There's no doubt about that. He can get injured. He may miss time. But just be aware that if you're trading him away, you are missing out on top five production and you weren't going to get that back in a trade. There is still a massive chance that he just plays all the way through. In fact, I'd say that's pretty likely with how he's going, getting used to the new system, new teammates, all that sort of stuff. So that is always that risk. Awesome. Ravishing Rick Rubio. 30 minutes for Rubio, 17-5-7 with three steals. And curiously, they are not playing D'Angelo Russell as a point guard. Makes it even more curious that these dickheads in the front office passed on LaMelo Ball because you couldn't play him together. But now Russell's playing every one of his minutes next to either Rubio or next to McLaughlin. So, you know, stupidity reigns once again. But um, this is maintaining some of Rubio's value. I don't know if it will continue long term. I don't imagine that Russell will continue to play 24 minutes a night, even though, to be fair... I reckon Rubio might be better than him, but that's not how I think this team views it. But there's an open spot, pretty clearly, on this team. And Jake Lehman's not the guy to fill that hole. Giggity! He, they could go Rubio, Russell, Edwards. Very, very easily. Maybe Rick's a hold. Goose. Thought he was pretty poor early on in this game, but recovered nicely for 27 points in 34 minutes. Anthony Edwards, he had two threes. He got a steal. 60 from the line is not great, but 52 from the field is pretty strong. He remains a really big volume, 29 usage, big minutes. Still not convinced of him as a long-term absolute all-star, all-NBA guy because some of the shot selection stuff is pretty rough, but he's been he's had the ability to improve his peripherals, which is really important for his fantasy value. Well, Jaden McDaniels, 37 minutes. So I feel pretty confident with his playing time. He's a must-roster 12-team league guy. We'll talk. Don't worry, guys. We will talk about his brother later. Eight points in 37 minutes for Jaden McDaniels. Seven rebounds, two steals. Didn't block a shot, but he's a 12-teamer. Well, Naz Reed went off. 16 and 5 in 15 minutes. He's a nice... Naz is a nice, like, 16-team league guy. And D'Lo, as I said before, they didn't play Russell as a point guard. He was next to Rubio and McLaughlin the whole time, and they barely played him with Towns. Very, very interesting there. I don't know. Maybe Finch views him very differently to Ryan Saunders. Maybe Finch views him as Jordan Clarkson, a 26-minute bench guard who can run things in the second unit or be the scoring guy in the second unit. Very interesting. 17 points on 15 shots is shithouse, obviously, but five assists is nice. 100% from the line is pretty good. He should be rostered, but I'm very intrigued to see where this goes. Jarrett Culver played 18 minutes, and for Jarrett Culver, that's a win. To be honest, if you had to play that many minutes, that's a huge win. Eight points there for him. He's still not going to trouble the uh, the scorers for fantasy. Well, Jordy McLaughlin had three assists in 20 minutes, and 
Jake Lehman started for God knows what reason. Nine points in 16 minutes for him. We do not care at all. For the Pacers, Timothy John McConnell, 19 points, 15 assists, two steals. No Brogdon, so he went bananas. He also shot 75% because why not? Hit his only three. Just big numbers again from Tej, who is benefiting from Turner, Brogdon, and Sabonis all being out. Aaron Holiday also benefited. 22 points for Azza in those 22 minutes. He had three assists and a block. He shot... 75 from the field and 100% from the line. So look, just do not buy a single thing about that. And I'm not buying anything about Justin Holiday either. 21 points with five threes on 62% shooting. He was still a minus 14 somehow in a game they won by four. Um, he's trending downwards. I think he's a, a steals and threes streamer and this game doesn't change it. How? i tell you what it was tonight. It was a good night for blokes that I think have got good potential and are going to be good players but haven't shown it yet. Problem with my Google mobile Google mobile no, not the dart. Not the dart. Screw you, mate. It is the dart. Gogo Badadze, 14 points in 25 minutes. Five assists, a steal, a block, two triples, 55% shooting. If this guy becomes a starting center, and I think it happens in the next two years, he will have multiple top 50 fantasy seasons. So we got into some early foul trouble, recovered well, and just showed... Look, he has been showing you this for the last two weeks, showing you that potential. It's been building, and it's been building. Of course, Turner and, Brog uh, and Sabonis being out is the reason. And he's going to play 12 minutes a night otherwise. But he's building. And he's building and he's building and it's great. Levert had 18, 5, and 4. And not particularly good there from Karras. We'd hope for a little bit more in a situation where he is that number one guy. Well, Dougie McDirt was pretty trash. 12 points in 16. And Eddie Sumner had 7 points in his 22 minutes. But a good win nonetheless for the Pacers with so many guys out. Good to see them getting um, getting those numbers and getting that, uh, getting that cracking in. Guys... It's a stressful time. It's, 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 life is stressful in general. But wouldn't it be great if there was a pocket-sized guide that could help you sleep, to focus, to act, and to be better? And there is. And if you have 10 minutes, Headspace can change your life. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. I use Headspace to get myself in it. Look, there's a, so much information flying around fantasy basketball and the NBA and then life in general. You've got to try and clear your head sometimes, and that's exactly what Headspace can do. Headspace can really help you feel better. If you're overwhelmed, Headspace is a three-minute SOS meditation for you. If you need help falling asleep... Headspace has wind-down sessions their members swear by. And for parents, Headspace even has morning meditations you can do with your kids. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash lockedonmba. That's headspace.com slash lockedonmba for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now, so head to headspace.com slash lockedonmba today. And after you've got your head cleared from using Headspace, you'll come to the realization that why would you go to a local auto store? where the bloke behind the counter can condescend to you and can charge you for um, you know, McDaniels bolts and for um, Pokusevsky grinders. And you're going to go, that's not a real thing. Because, nah, mate, trust me, it is. And I'm going to charge you 400 bucks for it. But if you go to rockauto.com, a family business which has been trusted for 20 years, selling auto parts to customers at cheaper prices, you know what the right parts for your car are, and you're not going to get ripped off. RockAuto.com, the catalog is unique and it's remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and prices you prefer. And those prices, my God, they are always reliably low and they're the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. So why would you spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Go to RockAuto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there, how did you hear about us box, so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, RockAuto.com. All right, let's go next game, second game of the day. It is the Washington Wizards versus the Orlando Magic. The Wizards win 131-116. Brad Beal was back, 26 points in 30 minutes, four triples, five assists, a steal and a block. Great numbers, except then after the game, Beal said, oh, I wasn't just a contusion. I've actually got nerve issues in my hip. And I went, oh, shit, that is not good. Now, if you want to talk shutdown risks, um, and by shutdown, I mean... The dude's injured and he's going to miss time. Uh, Beal is it. That is absolutely worrisome to me. He's the 10th ranked player so far this season. Uh, he'd already been on the downturn a little bit before this injury. Missed like five games in a row. And now comes out with that. I am absolutely shit scared that he is going to be missing a big chunk of time here down the stretch. I think he's going to miss back-to-backs at the very, very least. And he's going to miss more time. That is a real worry. Westbrook had 23, 14, and 15. And... 
A true shooting of 90%. Frame that one. You're never going to see that from Westbrook again. 73 from the field. Hit all four of his free throws. Big numbers. Westbrook had 60 fantasy points, and he is, after, honestly, an absolutely shit-out start to the season, he is rolling in a big way. Rui Hachimura returned. And this is just Rui Hachimura. He played 30 minutes. He had nine and seven with three steals. The three steals are great, but Beal's back. So usage down. Bertans is back. So minutes down. Therefore, Rui, sorry to say it, my guy. Get that garbage out! Very hard. Look, that sort of shit is not 12-team worthy. He was benefiting from a big usage and a big increase in minutes with those guys out, and they're not out anymore. Um, the potential big minutes for Alex Len never eventuated because Robin Lopez played, and of course, he played 29 minutes, 19 points for Lopez. He can be a 12-team league option, Big Rob, um, if you're looking for some of those big man stats. I wouldn't say he's a must roster, but there is something there. While uh, Denny Avdia, 16 points, four triples, two assists, five rebounds. Pretty good numbers for Denny. He's still only the 238th ranked player over the last two weeks, despite playing 30 minutes a night. So that's obviously far from ideal. But he is pushing up. Um, wouldn't be surprised if he has a couple of weeks where he can be a 12-team league guy, but we're not there yet. Davis Bertans, great stuff. 32 usage is obviously huge. 20 minutes is obviously not. Uh, 22 points with six triples. Is really good. I still don't believe that he is a must roster player, but obviously, if you're looking for points and threes, he can be that guy for you. But those minutes are a little bit of a worry. Good to see we only got 12 minutes of Hal Neto and 14 minutes of Ish Smith. Is Scott Brooks learning his lesson? I won't hold my breath, but that is obviously an improvement in the uh, in the minutes distribution to ship players category where Scott Brooks has been leading the league all season. Let's talk about Mo Bumba. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to keep referencing this because I think it's important. When we did the, the permanent monster video a couple of weeks back, he was a name that I brought up. This was before the trade deadline. And the worry with him has been he's just been so shit on the court, he's never got the minutes. Well, career night for Mobamba, 19 and 8, three triples, one steal, two blocks. This is why we have to watch him. This is why we have to pay attention. And this is why we're maybe adding him in 14 team leagues. Maybe adding him in 12 team leagues. Maybe. The magic rotation is still a big question mark. Um, because Carter Williams returned. Cole Anthony returned. We had 21 minutes for MCW. 13, 4, and 5 with four steals and block. That's excellent. But I don't think we can rely upon that in 21 minutes a night. That's just not realistic. So I wouldn't look at him as a 12-team league guy. Cole Anthony returned. 13.7 assists in 26 minutes. I would add him in 12-team leagues personally. RJ Hampton played 28 minutes. Playing point guard, playing shooting guard. 14 and 6 with three threes. Really good. Gary Harris and Otto Porter are out. And you'd imagine if they, when they return, they'll be part of the rotation. So that's probably going to have an impact on Hampton. But I want them to play Hampton. I just didn't have the confidence in Clifford doing it. But he did it here. I still don't think RJ is really a 12-team league must-add player. I think he's probably a 14 to 16-team league guy more than anything. But this was good. Terry Ross is a must roster. 30 minutes, 24 points, 6 rebounds. And Wendell Carter, not the greatest from Wendell. He started off really well in terms of stats, but minus 17 was not ideal. 15 and 4 in 23 minutes. That still gets it done. And we also got 16 unnecessary Ken Birch minutes. Um, I don't, I mean, don't need to worry about too much about him. The shot, Dwayne Bacon. Why does this bloke play a single second? He is literally... Is he the worst player in the NBA? He's pretty bloody close. But Steve Kif Clifford loves him for whatever reason, and eventually he's got to be gone. Devin Kennedy in the rotation, recently signed player from the Magic. So if you are in, in deeper leagues, I guess you do have to be aware that uh, Devin Kennedy exists, and he is a player. Um, but that's probably about it. Jimmy Ennis with uh, Anthony returning, with Carter Williams returning. His uh, production, which had been super high, it was a mirage. It obviously fell off. And the worry I have here is uh, Chumura Kiki, who'd been playing really well, really well. But we had, you know, I had concerns with him as like, will the efficiency stick? And, and it didn't in this game. But he was also getting a huge level of usage. But obviously the return of Carter Williams, the return of Cole Anthony, um, that's going to have an impact on him. I, I wouldn't say this is the realistic you know, way of things, how they go. Now he was minus 23, so he was pretty shit house in this one. Um, um, so... I'll hold, but that 12% usage is more indicative of what he was doing earlier in the season. So there's definitely a a small level of concern there for me with um uh with with Truma at this point. Just just a bit just a bit wary. Next game, this was an ass kicking. The Pelicans and the Brooklyn Nets. 
139, Brooklyn, 111, New Orleans. Eric Bledsoe was ejected, not before putting up a big game, though. 26 points in 29 minutes. With all the injuries, he is a must-roster player, I believe. Um, there is some uh, there is some value in him for this short term. Now, he is going to have some issues at times with his efficiency numbers. I don't think we're all... Uh, yeah, we're all that surprised that that's, that's going to be a, a problem for Eric Bledsoe. But, hey, that's where we're at. Um, Lonzo Ball, talked about him in the sell high. He was going to drop off. He dropped off 15 points in 28 minutes. And it was pr- actually a bad game from Zion. 16, 4, and 6. The six assists are lovely. The two steals are great. The problem was is he was at 33 from the field and 57 from the line. So pretty, pretty poor overall there. And Isaiah Thomas... He's just super inefficient, guys. 11 points in 33% shooting. Um, No Hart, no Ingram, no Alexander Walker, no Lewis. Thomas is not going to get a regular rotation role. He is not anything more than that short-term streamer. And unfortunately, I love the bloke, but James Johnson... Get that garbage out of here! 27 minutes. Now, the six assists are nice, but 17% shooting is rough. And Ingram's going to return and kill his value. Jackson Hayes played 24 minutes, and Hernan Gomez played 17 minutes, so they played alongside Stephen Adams a little bit. Adams is a clear drop, eight points in 20 minutes, but this was just an ass-kicking, really, from the very beginning from Brooklyn. Let's talk about Brooklyn, because originally, Kevin Durant was back, and he was starting, and then he didn't come in until halfway through the second quarter. They benched him, and then he started the second half and had 17, 7, and 5, didn't miss a single shot in 19 minutes, and he went, oh yeah, Kevin Durant's really bloody good. They are some big, big numbers from uh, from KD. Now, of course, there's no James Harden still. Um, the Shark... Bruce Brown, Baby shark, do, 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 do. really Brent brought it defensively. Five steals, two blocks, nine points, eight rebounds. He can be a 12-team league guy for sure, but he is going to be inconsistent. Uh, Kyrie had 24 points with six assists. And LaMarcus Aldridge, big game. Another two blocks. He's blocking two shots a night for Brooklyn, which has value. He then also brought 22 points in 23 minutes. Now, we still don't have a fully healthy team, so we don't know how it's all going to go when Harden's there. Short term, if you want LaMarcus, by all means. I don't see it continuing as the season goes on, but this was good. Harris had 14 points, and Jeff Green started, had 11, 4, and 4. Blake Griffin, just the 13 minutes, and Nick Claxton, just 15 minutes. Of course, we are dropping uh, Nick Claxton, and we are dropping Blake Griffin. Get that garbage out of here! Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football is over. College basketball is over. Congratulations to Baylor. But the NBA and the NHL are in full swing. BetOnline even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV. Real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. BetOnline has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds, and it's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website, betonline.ig, or use your mobile device to sign up today and use our promo code LOCKEDON to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. All right, let's move on. Next game we've got is the Knicks and the Celtics. Close one here. The Celtics win at 101-99. Julius Randle, the double royal. His efficiency problems remain. 39% shooting, but 29-9-6 and with three steals and a block is good. Well, Rowan Barrett, big game from Rowan, who'd been a little bit down the last couple. 29 points, he hit six triples. Hit all six of his threes. That is pulling one right out of the anus. Five rebounds and two assists for Barrett. Big game for him. And Noel played 27 minutes. He had the two blocks. Good to see him get 27 minutes over Taj's 20. I still think that Noel is a 12-team league guy, but really, you're looking at two categories, steals and blocks. That's where it comes. Alec Burks had eight and two in 23 minutes. He's just a deeper league guy. While uh, Emmanuel quickly, no point for him in 12-team leagues. Everyone, we're going to talk about this later, everyone was rushing to add Reggie Bullock. He had six points in 26 minutes. This is what I said. He's a nice three-point three streamer, but you cannot rely upon his production or his his minutes generally. And Alfred Payton had eight points in 21 minutes as the whatever bullshit goes on with the guard rotation continued. Taj had two steals in a block, and he can be a 14-team league streamer for those defensive stats. There was no Kemba Walker for Boston, so they started Romeo Langford. Now, he doesn't have any fantasy appeal whatsoever. He had six points in 25 minutes with two threes and six rebounds, and that's really about it. The Rock DJ, Robbie Williams, 25 minutes, six and 10 with two blocks. A little bit of a concern that he played 25 minutes with Tristan Thompson playing 22, and the fact that Thompson was plus 24 and Williams was minus 21. Let's watch this one. That That is that is a concern for sure. Um, Jalen Brown. JB, you've got it again. 32 and 10 is great. Five threes are great. Two steals are great. One block is great. 43 from the line is horrendous, and 46 on tw- percent shooting on 26 attempts is also pretty bad. So good counters, 56 fantasy points, fantastic. Horrible efficiency. 
Uh, Tatum had 25 and 10, which was strong. And Marcus Smart, he will talk about horrible efficiency, 36% from the field. But he had a true shooting of 62, which makes it a good night. 100% from the line and had 17-4-9. We know Smart will always step his game up when he plays at point guard. And he will do more in those situations when Kemba is out. Pritchard played just the 16 minutes and Ojale played just the 13 minutes here. Next game is Dallas. They took on the Houston Rockets. And the Houston Rockets, they took them on back and they won. 102-93. Porzingis played 36 minutes in his return from a wrist injury. You'd have to expect he doesn't play tomorrow. 23-12 and 12 for KP. While Luka Doncic had 23-9-5 and 5 with a triple one. Unfortunately, his true shooting was 41%. That's horrible. 34%. Dorian Finney-Smith continued a nice little run of fantasy value. Nine and seven, hit three threes, had two steals and a block. And Timmy Hardaway played 31 minutes actually here, 18 and six. Josh Richardson sucked again, one point. One point. O of nine shooting. There's no reason for me to think that Josh Richardson's a must-roster player. When Nicola Melli had two points starting in place of Maxi Kleber in 24 minutes, he has no business being rostered either. Brunson, another 30 minutes, 14-3-3. and I do think he's a 12-team league guy. Hardaway, back to him. He can be a 12-team league guy if you're just looking for some points. Johnny Wall returned for the Rockets. Played 34 minutes, had 31-3-7, four steals, a block, and four triples. That is obviously amazing. 52% from the field is great from Wall. He'd been horrendous before the uh, before the injury. I am very curious to see what he does as we move forward, but that is good. Alinek, also good. 34 minutes, 10 and 18, two steals and two blocks. He's really good, Kelly Alinek. He's a must-roster player. While the crucifix Christian Wood, finally some shots started to go in a little bit, 47%, but can't hit free throws. Had 22 and 10 with five threes, and the blocks aren't quite there. He is at a downturn for sure. Um, everyone's nephew, Kevin Porter Jr., cousin Kev, had 14 points in 31 minutes with two threes, three assists, hit both his free throws, which is just a totally solid game. He's fine. He's a 12-team league guy, but I think the league winner moniker title that he was bestowed, you might want to calm your tits a little bit on that. Jay Sean Tate, the wild thing, not his best night. Eight points in 36 minutes with uh, pretty empty numbers overall. I think he still remains a 12-team league player. And with Wall back, Bradley went back to the bench and played only 12 minutes, while DJ Augustin had 11% shooting for three points in 19 minutes. Good win, though, for the Rockets. KJ Martin with some big uh, big plays as well in terms of uh, athletic uh, highlight-type stuff. Next game was a weird one. The Memphis Grizzlies smash. The Hawks, 131-113. No, no Brandon Clark or DeAnthony Melton or Justice Winslow. So Kyle Anderson, he just went big again. He is putting up some really huge numbers. 16-9-6 with two steals and a block. While Jonas Valanciunas... Jonas Valanciunas. Just keeps getting it done as well. 19-11-4. And, and Grayson Allen, who I told everyone I think we've got to add him, and then he dropped an absolute shit burger on us yesterday. Uh, had 30 points in 30 minutes. So there you go. Grayson Allen is, I believe, a 12-team league player for now. While Ja Morant recovered from his back issue yesterday. One of his better games. It's not saying much, but 19-7-7, and 7, 62% shooting. You'll be stunned to know he didn't have a steal. And then he was one of two from the line. So there's always something that just pisses me off with Ja Morant and his fantasy value. Dylan Brooks had 17 points and was remarkably restrained. Only took nine shots. He was a plus 22 Empty across the rest of the line, but good nonetheless. Desmond Bain had five points in 19 minutes. Yeah, not not that great there for Bainey. And then we saw, we got 14 minutes out of Killian Tilly. That's how much uh, the Grizzlies were up here. For the Hawks, Bogdan Bogdanovich continued his torrid pace. 24 and 6 in 36 minutes with four triples, three assists and two steals. At some point, it is going to cool off for him, but he's been really good. And as I said earlier, good night for the big men that I think are going to be good as we move forward. Because Anyeka Okongwu, the big O, 32 minutes in a start for Capella, 13 and 11 and two blocks. Fifth, top 50 fantasy guy in the future. Fanta Pants had 13, 5 and 4 in 31 minutes. Kevin Herter providing value while Capella, Collins, Gallinari, Hunter, Riddish, and Dunn are all out. There's six names who are all rotation pieces, and he's going to lose value as we move forward. Trey Young, let's be honest, Trey Young was terrible in this game. 14, 5 and 11 in 33 minutes. Well, Tone, not Tone Snell, let's talk Tone Snell, nine points. And he attempted a free throw. That's, that's the highlight. Uh, Solomon Hill, your guy, 10 and 6 with two steals in 29 minutes. And while all these guys are out, I don't think that Capella and Gallinari's situations are serious. But Snell, uh, not Snell, Hill, they're the same to me. They're the shitful guys who put up no fantasy numbers. Hill is a guy who has um, very very limited value. Lou Williams, also nowhere near a 12-team league guy who's rostered somehow in 51% of um, advanced leagues, which just makes no sense at all. He should not be rostered in any 12-team league whatsoever. 
streamer at the very least. Nathan Knight had nine and four in his 19 minutes, um, which is you know, pretty good numbers from Nida, but he uh, there's nothing obviously to get um, too excited about in that situation. Um, what else? What's the next game? Let's go on to that next one right now. We are looking at the Charlotte Hornets and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, let's just preface all of this by saying it's against Oklahoma City. But Jalen McDaniels was put Jalen McDaniels was put into the starting lineup, played 32 minutes, had 21 and 6 with three threes and two steals. So first thing we look at, true shooting 75% will not continue. 64% shooting, including 50% from three, will not continue. 18% usage might. 32 minutes not. Maybe that continues without Gordon Hayward. We want to take a fl- Jalen McDaniels showed flashes of this at the end of last season. If they're going to play him over the Martins, sure. Hey, take a flyer. It might not work out, and it will almost definitely be worse in this game. But take a flyer on Jalen, for sure. PJ Washington Jr. continues to be shithouse with his shooting. But to have a night where you shoot 23% from the field, which is undoubtedly atrocious, and still put up 37 fantasy points, this is why I said he's a buy low and a must roster player. 12 and 7, two threes, two steals, three blocks. This field goal percentage will improve. And the other numbers there. And he started at center. This is his best role. Miles Bridges, 16 and 4 with two steals in 36 minutes. He's a must roster. Interestingly, Bismack Biombo played zero minutes, went from starting to not playing. And Cody Zeller played 28 off the bench, 15 and 14 for Zals. More of a deeper league, 14, 16 team league guy, but let's watch how that goes. Uh, rough night for Rogier, the best shooter in the NBA, had uh, 17 points on 19 shots in 40 minutes, while Devontae Graham had 15, 4, and 5 with three steals. Devontae. They're not pushing him into big minutes, just the 27 here, but he is, of course, a 12-team league guy. There is um, there is obviously value in guys like Graham. I'd make sure Washington's rostered. I would add Jalen McDaniels, Miles Bridges. I'm not looking at um, Cody Zeller, though. For the Thunder, Alexei Pokyshevsky. Wow. 33 minutes for Pokyshevsky. The hipster doofus hit seven threes with nine rebounds and four assists. 64% shooting. You know that I was big on this guy before the draft, that I lamented teams not taking him before 17. He's wildly inconsistent. We know that. He is going to... And I've said a couple of guys, Badadze and Akong, we're going to have top 50 seasons. Um, Poku's going to have a top 30, I think, at some point. Because he can do everything. He can score. He can shoot. He can rebound. He can get assists. He can get steals. He can get blocks. He can hit free throws. It's just going to be, can he put it all together in a big minute roll with good usage and hit his shots at a decent rate? He can literally do it all. He's a must roster guy for now. He did leave this game early with a hip problem. He reckons he's fine, so that's good. The Salt Flake, Theo Maladon. 36 minutes for Theo, 25, 5, and 5 with two blocks. Yeah, he's a 12-team league guy, but it's going to be inconsistent. While Kenrich Williams, the Oklahoma City mudflap, Six points on 17% shooting looks terrible, but nine rebounds, nine assists, and three steals. He's putting up numbers at least to be 14-team league worthy, while the C part of Moses Brown. Now, let's. everyone's going to want to drop this guy for sure. I understand that. He's 197th ranked player over the last two weeks, so why wouldn't you? Five points on eight shots is horrendous. I don't expect a bloke like this to be a 25% shooter, so I can look at this from a couple of angles and go, that's shit out, so I'll drop him. Or I can say... Yeah, he hits two more shots. He has nine and 10 with a block, and that's all right. I think in 10-team leagues, we're okay with moving on. I think even in some 12s, if you're desperate, you can consider moving on. But I I don't think that Jack needs to come into this. I don't think he's a blanket drop. Tone Bradley had 12 and 7. Bradley's playing all right. I don't mind him as a 14-team league ad. And deeper leagues, 18-teamers, Jalen Horde, 13 points in 24 minutes, especially while literally Hall, Miller, Muscala, Dort, Roby, Baisley, and Gildas Alexander are all there. Now, I have no idea when these guys are going to return, but there's opportunities. That's why Kenrich is playing so much. That's why Horde's getting these minutes. Justin Robinson played 13 minutes. Um, Sfima Hayluk had 12 points with five assists and four triples. And look, honestly, when Baisley, Roby, Dort, uh, return and probably Josh Hall. Is there even a spot in the rotation for Mahaluk? Uh, Horde won't. Robinson won't. I, I don't know where they all fit. It's hard to work all this out in terms of when everyone comes back, if they all come back at some point, um, how that all plays out for the Oklahoma City Thunder. All right, let's go next game. The uh, Denver Nuggets beat the Spurs 106-96. DeJounte Murray had 18-5-6. and six. Pretty good night. Maximum Derek White, also pretty good. Maximum Derek. 18-4-2 with two blocks on 47% shooting. I have been 
you know, harping on that Derek White's a better shooter than we've seen. And he showed it here tonight. Now, not to say that's going to continue necessarily, but that's a pretty good game. Um, only four points for Jakob Pertl, but five rebounds, five assists, and two steals makes it okay. Well, pretty inefficient from DeMar DeRozan. Under 45 true shooting, 67 from the line, 14, 4, and 4. And Calden Johnson, yeah, you guys, just move on. 8 and 4 in 26 minutes with two steals for Calden. Um, not a huge amount else to really talk about here with the Spurs, I don't think. Um, Lucas Sharmanich went to the bench and played four minutes. Devin Vassell played 16 minutes ahead, three points. I Yeah, look, they are just struggling with the fact that they're not that good, but also the fact that the schedule is really catching up to them. For the Nuggets, Big Chungus, he is your MVP. Big, big Chungus, Big Chungus, Big Chungus. 25, 9, and 10, while Maga Porter Jr. had 18 and 10 with a triple one. He's a pretty strong shooting continued, although he was only 33% from three here. And Farton Will Barton, his good shooting did not continue, 23%, but 14, 4, and 5 with two steals and two threes. And Aaron Gordon, again, guys, nine points, three assists, two steals, and a block. Now, the defensive stats are there, but whenever there's a game that they seem to be in control of, they just keep limiting Gordon's minutes. Now, I got roasted for saying that I think he might become a drop after the trade, because I just didn't see how him being the fifth option on offense with the ball in his hands less would translate into big numbers. The field goal percentage has increased. The defensive stats have been good, but he's still just the same bloke. Like the back-end 12-team league guy that in most cases, you're going to be better streaming. He'll have bigger games. He'll have worse games. But if he doesn't have two steals and a block here, it's an absolutely shithouse game. Um, He's not that good from a fantasy perspective. Faku Campazzo started with the headmaster out, six points in 28 minutes, while Monty Morris had seven points in 19 minutes. They don't consider this Jamal Murray injury serious, um, but obviously we want to monitor it whenever you miss two games in a row with a knee problem. While Paul Mills, uh, try again, Paul Millsap was resting. I'm not tired. So we've got more minutes for Jermichael Green and JaVale McGee, who don't normally play together that much. And uh, PJ Dozier got 28 off the bench and wasn't able to replicate his heroics from the last game. Uh, On to the last game of the night. What a, what, a, what a ripper this was between really two really good teams, the Jazz and the Suns. Goes to overtime. The Suns win it at home, 117-113. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. <laughs> Look, he has under 13% usage and still has 16 points. He didn't block a shot, but was 7 of 7 from the line, from the field, 2 of 2 from the line, 18 boards, 3 steals, big game. Don Mitchell was pretty poor last game. He's gone. He's good. Yeah, but he was good here. 41 in 41 minutes with 4 triples and 8 rebounds. Bit disappointing with the shooting numbers and the usage absolutely out of his ass. 46% shooting on 35 attempts, 41% usage. Thought Derek Favors did all right. Well, Jordan Clarkson, you're going to be stunned to know this. He didn't shoot well. This has been an ongoing problem for Clarko, who is now the 183rd ranked player over the last two weeks. I think that if you do want to move on from him, I don't think there's any problem with that. 11 points with three triples. Conley also struggled 11 points in 35 minutes, and Royce O'Neal had only two points. While Boyan Bogdanovich, you look at it and go, 40 minutes, great. 20 points, let's go. And then one rebound, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks, only one three, and he shot 60% from the line. He's been a massive disappointment this year. The 20 points is great. And if you need to stream points in, Bogdanovich is one of those guys, but so is Davis Bertans and so is uh, and a bunch of other names who I can't remember off the top of my head, but there are a bunch of those. Uh, Reggie Bullock, perhaps as a guy, you're looking for threes and points off the wire. You can find them. And I wouldn't have Bogdanovich, the 169th ranked player, as a must roster guy. Jinglin Joe Ingles, he's also trending down pretty hard. Five points in 27 minutes. Now, I would hold him because Conley won't play tomorrow most likely, so Ingles will start and his numbers will go up. But in this bench role, I am not, and, and it is. It seems weird to say that hey, Ingles is the 91st ranked player. I'd drop him, but it is trending in the wrong direction for Joey. So I'd just be watching that. It's always a struggle for centers to go up against Gobert, except for today, because DeAndre Ayton was fantastic. 18 and 12, two steals and three blocks. I thought he was really good. One of his best games of the year. Well, Chris Paul couldn't keep the double-digit assist streak going, but ended with 29, four and nine, and. Uh, Booker had 35 points. It was a terrible night for McCall Bridges. He had five fouls, played 20 minutes and was scoreless and attempted one shot. Do not panic. Buy low. Do not drop. Do not drop. I cannot stress that enough. But with him in foul trouble, Cam Johnson, one of his better games in terms of minutes at least, 37 minutes for Cam, 11 points, three triples, eight rebounds, a steal and a block. And you're going to be stunned to know that Jay Crowder... 
Sometimes may be good, sometimes may be shit. Yeah, he was shit. Six points in 38 minutes on 22% shooting, but the 12 boards are nice. We know he is wildly up and down with his steals and his threes and his shooting numbers, and you have to be willing to deal with some pretty bad field goal percentage to roster him. Uh, Sharich had six points in 11 minutes, while there's not much else to really talk about. I don't think with this Suns team, it was just a really impressive win and a really good game to watch. Let's look at the top ads and drops over the last 24 hours. Reggie Bullock up 26%. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about it. Obviously, it didn't pan out today. To me, he's a streamer more than anything. Malachi Flynn up 24%. Hey, I think he's going to have a big one tomorrow. Giggity. And then Killian Hayes up 20%. I'm not sure about one with Hayes, but I understand getting in early, taking the flyer, see what happens. I think there's a decent chance he starts tomorrow. But also, his coach is a dickhead who plays a 13-man rotation and lets Saban Lee run out there. So that's always the thing you got to balance. Dorian Finney-Smith up 15%, absolutely one of the lowest upside players out there, but solid enough value to be a back-end 12-team league guy. While Grayson Allen up 14%, that obviously paid off today. I do think Grayson is a 12-team league guy. For drops, Isaiah Roby down 17%. Sure, I think he'll be an ad later on, though. Malik Beasley down 14%. Sure, get rid of him. Nikhil Alexander-Walker down 13%. I think you've got to drop him as well. Terrence Mann down 12%. Clearly a drop in Shake Milton down 10% as well. I think he's a drop. Also, let's have a look now. The top 10 performances under 50% rostered in advanced leagues. The Shark, Bruce Brown at number one. Mo Bumber at number two. Bumber's a, a nice four-team team flyer. Same with Brown, I think. Aaron Holiday, I wouldn't read into that. Jalen McDaniels at number four. I would take a flyer on him in 12s. Grayson Allen at five. He's an ad. Carter Williams at six. Really good numbers, but I don't see that as anything more than 14 to 16 teamers. Cody Zeller, similarly. He's a 14-team leaguer. Chris Giotta, Cool. Uh, Gogo Badadze, as long as Turner and Sabonis are out, he has 12-team value. And then Dorian Finney-Smith, who, as I said, lowest upside you can find, but really solid 12-team league value. That'll do it for talking about the action from Wednesday. Let's now talk some DFS for Thursday in the NBA. All right, so there's seven games on. Let's take a look. Uh, pricing or your yeah, values at the end via FanDuel. Uh, Lakers-Miami, the first game. The Heat are 8.5-point favorites, and the total is 204.5. Andre Drummond looks like he'll return. So how that Drummond, Gasol, Harrell uh, combination goes up in the air. Kuzma's probable. Hero is probable. While Ben McLemore might be available as well. Not sure he's going to actually play a role, but he might be available. The Bulls and the Raptors, no Van Vliet, no Lowry, and a whole bunch of bench guys out as well, including Paul Watson. So more Bembry, more Flynn, probably Boucher starting once again. While for the Bulls, Kobe White and Lowry Markinen are both probable, as is Zach Levine. So I don't really think there's too much to worry about with those guys. The Cavs and the Thunder, no Allen or no Nance for Cleveland. So Wade and Love likely starting once again with some minutes of Hartenstein in there. The Cavs are two-point favorites. The total is 212. While for the Thunder, we don't know about Roby, Dort, Baisley, Hall, Mascala, Miller. I'm going to assume they are all out, but I don't know that. And then Alexei Pokyshevsky, after a big game on Wednesday, came off towards the end of the game. And at the time of me recording this, I don't know his status um, for this game on Thursday. We'll talk about that in the pregame show for tomorrow. The Bucks and the Mavericks back-to-back for Dallas. Yanni is out for Milwaukee, and I assume that Kristaps Porzingis will be out for Dallas, given it is a back-to-back. Maxi Kleber also in doubt for Dallas after missing today's game. Um, Detroit and Sacramento, Jeremy Grant is out, as is Scooter Magruder. While for the Kings, they have a relatively clean bill of health. So how... Killian Hayes will return for Detroit as well. So how they run that front court, who takes that spot, will be Siku. Will they put Tyler Cook in there in place of Jeremy Grant? Portland and Utah back to back here for the Jazz, so Mike Conley probably doesn't play. The Jazz are seven point favorites, and the total's two thirty one. Yusuf Nurkic has been upgraded to questionable, while Norman Powell is probable. So good news that Nurkic only missed that one game. He might miss another, but at least he hasn't been ruled out a day in advance. Phoenix and the Clippers. This is a back to back for Phoenix. Well, for the Clippers, they are five point favorites. The total is two hundred and twenty four, and Serge Ibaka the only name on the injury report. So if it's a Zubats, will start. Whether that means Patrick Patterson or Demarcus Cousins gets the backup job, I don't know. And Patrick Beverly will be playing once again. If we look at values right across on Fanduel, I like Isaiah Stewart and Isaiah Hartenstein. I like fifty two hundred for Andre Drummond. Maybe Moses Brown, only because he's at 5,100. Don Mitchell at 78. I like Zubat. I like Hayes, Killian Hayes. Uh, Rashawn Holmes, I like. I like Dean Wade, Rudy Gobert, Joshy Jackson, Luka Doncic. Although there is a risk to me that Doncic doesn't play. Um, Teo Maladon. Um, 
Boucher, Clarkson, Siakam, Fox, Ingles, George, Halliburton, Sexton all come up looking pretty good. And maybe even Joshy Richardson and Jalen Brunson if Doncic does happen to sit. Don't forget, guys, to follow on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and subscribe on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Hit the bell, and you'll never miss an episode, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.